Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our podcast. Today, we are talking with Randy Huntington. Randy is a U.S. track and field master coach who has over 45 years of experience. He has coached many Olympian and world championship athletes, such as Mike Powell and Willie Banks, who set the world record in long jump and triple jump. And past nine years, he's uh, he was working with Chinese national team and he had an amazing result with them, like Su Bin Tian, the toppest uh, sprinter in China and in Asia. And top, it's one of the top in the world. Uh, and uh, like in this July, uh, his Chinese athlete Wang Jia Nan got the gold medal in men long jump event in world championship. Uh, thanks for joining us, Randy. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. It's, uh, it's good to be here and not there right now. <laughs> uh, so now you are in state, yeah? Yeah. Get home, home yeah. for a short time, yeah. Yeah, can you tell us more about your journey as a athlete, as a coach? You know? um, no journey as an athlete. I was never an athlete. Uh, I never participated uh, beyond a, a little bit in high school. Uh, I was always athletic and doing things, but I was never a track and field athlete, let's say, per se, or, or, or any other sport for that matter. Um, so I started out coaching women's gymnastics at the University of Oregon with Henrietta Heine. Um, yeah. I wanted to learn gymnastics to teach my eye to be able to follow the body uh, when as it was moving through space, and gymnastics is the best place to, to learn that. So like you might put your children in gymnastics when they're young, as a young coach, I wanted to go to gymnastics to learn. And so I learned yeah. to be able to follow uh, pretty much any movement in space. And that gave me uh, a very good perspective and background when it came to looking at tactical events and, and being able to analyze them. Uh, with my eyes before yeah. long before video cameras existed <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so and and then you know to make a long very long 45 year journey very short uh yeah. i i moved to several universities for a short yeah. short amount of time um the, the money back then wasn't enough to allow you to survive mm -hmm. uh whereas today you can make a, a pretty good living uh, at, at any given university um, mm -hmm. in the United States. Then uh, I would decided to start just coaching elite athletes, and that's when I started mm -hmm. working with uh, – I just finished working with Sheila Hudson, who's American record holder in the triple jump, and I went down and working with Willie Banks and Mike Powell and Gordon Lane and Al Joyner in 1988. And um, Mike went on to win the silver in 88 in the long jump, yeah. and – Willie had uh, an Achilles injury, so we didn't we didn't achieve what we wanted to there, and continued coaching other uh, emerging elite or elite athletes over the next uh, oh ten years or so. Uh, walked away from coaching for a little while to go into the business yeah. world, and I was director of marketing for a couple of companies, yeah. uh, international marketing and national marketing. Uh, that 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 in itself still allows you and, and helps you as a coach because you're learning leadership yeah. skills, team skills. You're you're taking a lot exactly. of what you do in sport and, and moving it to a different uh, stadium, per se. And uh, then in uh, 2009, I went to South yeah. Korea yeah. and started as their coach, uh, just long jump, triple jump. Had some pretty good results. The jumpers beat the Chinese, which is the first time that it happened. And so several years later, um, I was in, in the midst of being director of marketing and education for Kaiser. And um, several years later, the uh, Chinese invited me over. At, well, actually, I went on vacation and ended up getting an invitation once I arrived in China to, to, to go do a few talks with their athletes and watch competition. Six months later, that brought them to asking me to um, ask me if I would want to come to China to coach. And it was a lot, it was not an easy decision because I had a very good yeah. position 
And yeah, yeah. my DNA, of course, for anybody who knows me, is in Kaiser. Yeah. Um, you know, that's uh, I've been using Kaiser since 1983. So yeah. for me, it's deeply embedded in how I do things. Uh, but I took the job. And uh, nine years later, we we're here talking about it because I now am retiring from China as of October 1st. So, so you don't, uh, so you finish, uh, is one thing, are you retired or no, just, uh, you just finish working with Chinese national team? Retiring from the Chinese national team, yes. Yeah, I mean, I see this, uh, I mean, because I have a, a little connection with Chinese athletics, uh, you know, uh, I, I used to be a long distance runner. I mean, not high level, I mean, uh, but I was a runner. So I have a good connection with Chinese uh, Athletics uh, Federation and I see the impact uh, 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 you give to the Chinese uh, athletics. I mean, the amazing result uh, with the uh, sprinter jumper, with the uh, male, female relay, 100 meters. And I mean, especially with uh, Wang Jianan and Su Bin Tian, how was that experience? Well, it's, I mean, all of it's, it's all of it's positive. It, and, and when you're working another challenge with language, without the language skills, that's always another challenge that you have to overcome. Um, mm -hmm. Changing the culture of a specific sport, not the culture of a country, but the culture of that sport. So yeah. that they understand what success is going to be and how to achieve it, that is pretty difficult. I mean, we had a, we've had a lot of success. Um, I didn't yeah. coach the women's four by one, by the way. Raina Ryder did. Oh, that. I didn't. Uh -oh. Um, uh, I, I I worked with with um, Wei Yong Lee, uh, yeah. kind of on the side for several years before she went to yeah. Raina full time. Um, and you know, it's just it's. As a coach, you know what you do is you you're helping people reach their dreams. I mean, Wang yeah, Jianan exactly. won World Juniors in 2014, and and you know eight years later he comes back and in the same stadium, well, not the same stadium, yeah. but yeah. the same location, he comes back and wins the World Championships. And I was really happy for him because he is, um, it actually is a better story than Sue in some ways because yeah. he's. He's had so many challenges himself, physically, yeah. mentally, to overcome, and he did it. And then, he, then he did achieve uh, the first gold medal, the first male yeah, gold medal uh, yeah, outside that's, of the show. amazing. Yeah, you know, and and uh, the relay. Uh, but you know, we ended up. We I think I think I've worked with seven of the top ten all time in China now, in the long yeah. jump. Uh, triple jump, they didn't let me actually work with as much as I'd like to, but I worked with Dong Bin some, and yeah. his coach picked up on what we were doing and, and then took him on to that bronze medal and then the gold medal indoors and the bronze medal outdoors in the Olympics. Um, I had him for the silver medal in 2014, should have won. That That's a learning experience. Um, then... Uh, you know, in 2017, Su Bing Ten was going to retire, and they asked me if I would work with him for several months while he was transitioning from retirement to the next part of his life. And of course, that's when he ran 6:42, and that changed his life. And yeah, it's exactly. that that's been another challenge because he's an older yeah. athlete; he's got his own little aches and pains, and his yeah. his his own uh, venture is his own path, and tried to help him achieve those things and we've achieved some great things i mean time wise we just we just didn't get i mean we got a bronze medal out of the olympics for the relay yeah. and, and that's incredible yeah um, that's, that's i would i would like to have seen him get an individual medal and i think he's still capable of it yeah. it's unfortunate that they moved to the world championships again this year or in 2023 um and then uh wong chun yu who a lot of people don't even, maybe not even know I, I, I coached her, um, yeah. the 800 meter runner who was fifth in Tokyo in the, in the 800. Um, you know, she went from basically a two flat to 202 800 meter runner to 157 in, in, in 10 months. And uh, I would like result. to have continued working with her, but some things happen in her personal life that uh, aren't going to allow that to happen. 
and I think that that's uh, unfortunate. But yeah. I wish her the best, and I want to make sure that uh, uh, hopefully she she does well in the future. That kind of brings us to today. Yeah, that's that's is amazing. I mean, just I didn't know you. I, I thought you just uh, coached a, a sprinter and a jumper. I didn't know it, even you coached a eight hundred meters. This is no. I've, I, in track and field, I've coached everything up through five thousand. In at, uh, at professional, in in professional level, yeah. At, at in some point, athletes. yeah. I mean, um, or, or or in some cases, some part of of, mm-hmm. of an athlete's life. So I may. I may have acted as their strength and conditioning coach or their mm-hmm. technical coach or something like that. But in in in, in the case of Chen Yu, I was I was doing everything for her just like I did with Sue and Jainan and Wu and Liang and uh, a whole host of them that we've tried to influence and leave a legacy. I mean, I've I've left a legacy in yeah. Wang Goje, the young PhD who's now yeah. in Nanjing and who worked closely with Jainan this year yeah. um, and and through parts of COVID and has done a great job. And and he gives yes. as much credit for Jainan as, as anybody does. And and it's important because it's, I've been to the top of the mountain enough times. It's, no. it's not about me. It's about them getting to the top of the mountain and changing that culture to where people start to understand that it's about the yeah. athlete. And if you're first answer to a question is does this help yeah. the athlete then you need to have another question interesting i mean you have been coaching uh, many athletes from western country like state and uh, eastern country like chinese and south korea uh, what is the difference as a coach to coach these uh, chinese or south korean and state what's the different the, the biggest overall difference is the fear of failure and losing face and not understanding that that's part of the culture of winning, that you actually want to embrace failure because that is that is where winning is going to come from. Yes. It will also keep you humble and keep you focused. Um, not understanding what winning is and what it takes to win, this has been a big a big problem uh, in in China and Korea. Uh, mm. Yes, you know because they their only view of winning or athletes. Basically, for Korea was YouTube. For China, it was whatever they could gather, and uh, and whatever access they could get to certain videos, and that would leave you short of exactly how to do something. You might see something, but have no idea how it's actually being done. And yeah. I, I, and I'm not without people, obviously, in China not liking what I do, uh, thinking that technically I'm wrong, um, that our training isn't right. You know, I I have a, a, a severe tendency to undertrain people because I usually use competition as the final aspects of training. The yeah. problem is in China, you oftentimes don't get that competition to fine tune them for those that final yeah. aspect. Particularly in this given year, that, that happened to us really bad. It's interesting. I still remember I was uh, uh, chatting with one of the. Chinese uh, sprinter coach, and he told, uh, she told me, she told me, I don't know what Randy coach is doing, but I, I hope my athletes always be there and train with him because anytime she's there, she's better. She's better. I, I say this, I, I love to, even she says, I love to learn from coach Randy. I mean, this is, they are, I say he is much better I, than us. I gave them the, a, a, every opportunity and open the door to anybody who ever wanted to come and learn. I'm sure I'll probably go back and teach at some point. I don't know when. Um, I'm not planning anytime soon. Uh, after October 1st, I'm, I'm on my own, and, and I want to yeah. take some time to work on my own health and my own fitness and and uh, my own life. You know, I, I've, I've given up more than I should have probably. Uh, you, you, you can't really ever tell that until you're through it and you look back at it. But um, right. I think that we, we each have to make that decision about what we're willing to sacrifice to uh, help others achieve or to achieve for ourselves. And, and, and in many cases, that's the difference between good and great. Uh, it, and, and that is the, the degree to which you will sacrifice to achieve.
Yeah, I still, uh, yeah, I remember I was uh, watching one of your workshops with Chinese uh, uh, coaches and those things, skills, though, uh, your teaching, I was, th I was thinking, oh, hope I was there and learning from you. Even I, sometimes, you know, there was always a uh, door open for stringent conditioning course in Chinese athletics, but uh, never for sprinter. I mean, they, they asked me for long distance, for uh, race walking for Tokyo, uh, but no. uh, I mean this is this is this Abba, this is this is part of of learning, and that is that yeah. what you do with a sprinter is essentially the same thing you do with any runner, except for I mean except for a race walker. But yeah. you you look at their mechanical efficiency, you look at their yeah. physiological efficiency, where are the weaknesses, what do they look like compared to the best in the world? Do they look anything like them? You know, if they don't, maybe they're in the wrong event. Um, yeah. You know, you have to make those decisions. And, 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 and the fact is that, you know, when, you, when I started working with Chen Yu, I said, I have to teach you how to sprint because you don't know how to sprint. And this is yeah. a sprint race. Um, <laughs> you know, and she, and she went from 53.86 to, what, 52 flat and probably could run 50.5 if we just train only for the 400. Yeah. You now she's got that kind of ability in there, um, but she's she's not young either. You remember she's twenty seven years old. Yeah. So you're also starting with somebody ten years after, twelve years after you should have, you know. Yeah. The interesting. So the the lessons from, and, and I've had American coaches ask me this before in the past. Like, so what do you do for weight training for distance runners and? And what do you do for the the drills? And I tell you, all you got to do is watch an American distance coach do drills if you want to see how not to do drills, <laughs> and, and and to understand what not to do and, and and how it's not done, because they don't quite get it. Um, and once they get it, then it changes what they do. And now in American distance running has really changed, and. Obviously, some of the coaches get it. These times these kids are running right now are really superb. That's changed in the last four or five years. And I think that we have, you know, China could have similar results in the middle distances if they put their mind to it and started going after those kids that, you know, like you move your 200 kids up to 400, yeah. 400 kids up to 800, 1500. Depends if they have any aerobic ability. I've already suggested these things. It's nothing new. It's just uh, taking the opportunity to to utilize um, the athlete's best abilities. I mean, somebody who runs 22.8 or 23, they're really not going to do them much internationally. Yeah. You're probably not going to make a semifinal in a 200, you know. Um, certainly won't be in a final. And... But you could take that same speed and learn to endure that speed and you could perhaps put yourself in a 400 or have a 400 girl who's running 52 and move them up to the 800 or the 1500 for that matter. I mean, Chen Yu ran her first 1500 in 2021. She ran 407. Her, her PB was 425. Interesting. You know, wow. it, yeah. it, it, the ability's there. Yeah, it's it's just learning how to to bring it out. I, and the, the problem with Chinese and and Korean the same way, and Japan to a degree, they're all volume based. Yeah, yeah. So they all want to do sure. more. Exactly. And, and that's not that's not necessarily the answer initially. Um, getting them to understand that they need to first learn how to do something with properly and then yeah. with intensity and then extend, extend the speed, extend the volume. But don't try to come from volume the other direction. doesn't work all the time, can work sometimes. But For uh, endurance also is the same, for long distance is the same? Yeah, the same absolutely. Up. Mechanical efficiency first. Mechanical efficiency, and then add add the, the so bio biomechanical or biokinetic, some people call it, 
uh, efficiency and and biophysiological or physiological efficiency yeah. and then you then you merge those two so that they become more efficient with every step yeah if they become more efficient with every step then they're going to just train faster and yeah. the training faster is going to lead to faster times it's 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 not a hard equation it's mostly just a lot of math yeah. um, and and understanding how to get their bodies to be in the proper positions i mean you know muscles set up yeah. joints to take yeah. advantage of the elastic ability yeah. of that particular lever system so so muscles if you wish to say it this way you could say muscles reposition joints to take advantage of the elastic abilities the elastic to create elastic power to uh, to get that the function of that lever system to be uh, the most the best and once you get that it's easy to run fast it's just yeah, it's it's easy. yeah i just still remember when i was because i was long distance but i mean but my 100 meters even 200 four, even four i mean i was a uh, like for me it was over like 14 30 my 5k something around that I mean, but these but guys, my... these guys are running fourteen. What the women are running fourteen fifteen. Yeah, uh, the men are running, you know, twelve thirty. Whatever yeah. the world record is for five thousand. I'm telling you, you better know how to sprint at the end of that thing. Um, you know, and, and you've got to become more mechanically efficient, and 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 physiological efficiency follows mechanical efficiency. A lot of people have mechanical efficiency following physiological efficiency. And I think that if you look at, this may be a bad example, but if you look at Formula One, they take yeah. essentially the same cars from race to race, yeah. but they change that car, and the thing that changes the most, the engine doesn't change a lot, but what yeah. changes the most is the tires and the suspension. Yeah, and, right. and that allows them to drive that particular track better than... Uh, the previous one, perhaps, or or better than without changing it, say. So, to to get people to first work on mechanical efficiency, that means learning what stiffness is, learning what bounce yeah. is, learning what elastic power is, and then from there, creating your great uh, physiological capacity under the guise of great mechanical efficiency and you will fly it's 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 really yeah, this is interesting. much easier to run oops i got somebody go ahead yeah so uh, uh coach uh, we talk about the young kids the children young athletes i mean and yeah. i mean we know that uh, speed sprint is very very important uh what's the age to start the speed training and what we need to do well, let's, let's not call it speed training let's call it or sprint. mechanical efficiency training if you yeah. wish uh yeah. nine to twelve is the best nine to 12. women more towards nine boys more towards 12. and what to do what, what which kind of training what you, is the you, you, okay you're gonna you're gonna get into an area where i'm not gonna be able to talk much about it because it's a lot of stuff but you, they learn. How, they need to learn how to drill properly. They need to learn how to yeah. do mini hurdles. They need to learn how to reposition their legs. They need to learn what sprinting mechanics look like because everything else comes out of sprint mechanics. Your efficiency just drops below what you're doing in your sprint. And then once you have that efficiency figured out, then you move on to longer distances and greater efficiency, which includes in your in your in your long runs. You learn yeah. how to reposition your legs differently in your long runs you don't do a lazy long run anymore um these are things that are important yeah this that you're right so, so telling you what we do as a you know what <laughs> yeah here's what we do and you're not going to understand anything i'm talking about because there's no pictures there's nothing so yeah i can tell you that they need to learn how to drill all the drills are around the drills yeah. i've done them they're on videos they're all over Chinese internet. Um, yeah. Wong Go Jay can explain it to anybody in Chinese. 
Yeah. Uh, so the 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 fact is that this is the first step. You, you know, they have to learn how to run over many hurdles properly. Yeah. And and most of them don't. To be honest. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, coach, uh, we, we, it's the uh, let's talk about the not uh, sprint athletes. So, uh, as you know, so the, most of the sprinting, the running, they are doing uh, in high speed. In uh, most of the sport, is under maybe 20 meters, 30 meters, even some mostly sometimes under 10 meters. So, you think is the you need to more work? Uh, just we focus on acceleration. Well, I don't know what sport you're talking about now. So you're talking about track so, and field? Are you talking no, no, about soccer? Not... Are you talking about rugby? Yeah, yeah. Or are you talking about badminton or volleyball? I mean, all, they're all different. And yet, so, you know, before we were talking about track and field, the majority yeah. of sports need to spend most time in acceleration to learn how to accelerate properly, uh, forward, backward, side, multidirectional acceleration. So uh, how about the basketball player? If we, Same if we work... thing. It's Same sports thing. sport. Same so, thing. It, you need to learn how to do that, and you, need to be, and, and you need to be strong enough to do it. So, you know, in, in that case, you're looking at the DIS, the dynamic isometric strength, the ability to change direction. That's DIS. That's eccentric to concentric strength. And yet that, that is, and, and, and all of that has to be helped in the weight room. I mean, these are really big questions that I can't answer here. Yeah, that's... I can just tell you kind of what, what, what they are, but I'll never be able to answer them over a podcast. It just won't happen. Yeah, I understand. You, you see, Coach, we, we say, yeah, when we talk about the, like, uh, strength training, resistance training, I mean, there is tons of uh, uh, articles, uh, books, I mean, everything about strength training. But when we come about the sprinting, speed training, there is not enough uh, materials to study. What, what, why there is not too much coaches start to write a book? I mean, what's... I, I don't know. I mean, well, writing a book for... It's just like me trying to do this here. You really have to be live with it. It's like somebody no. trying to understand Kaiser. Everybody figures out eventually people will never understand Kaiser until they try it. They feel it. They use it. Yeah. Same thing. You've got to be with an experienced coach who teaches drilling properly, who teaches mechanics properly. And there's just not that many of them. I was there nine years. I would have given anybody yeah. anything they wanted. Um, I didn't have any takers. So now I'm gone. So now it's going to be up to Wongo J to uh, really explain. And I think that if you want to have a Chinese audience in this, that you would do should do a podcast with him talking yeah. strictly about video and drilling because it's then in the Chinese language. Yeah, yeah. No, no this podcast is not for Chinese, so it's for out Yeah, just in China. case you wanted to. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so, Coach, you talk about the, you know, before about the endurance and less, and uh, what's killing the speed uh, ability? What we not, we must not to do to uh, decrease our speed ability. Okay, you know. What That's because most do. distance coaches only look at the physiological motor. They look at one engine. They don't look at the at the at the biomechanical efficiency. They don't look at the mechanical efficiency. They don't look at other contributors to speed. You know, I mean, your heart, lungs, cardiovascular system is one system that contributes to your race. But your yeah. you have a, a whole lot of other systems that can contribute to a race uh, and a great deal to the race. And I think that we don't yet understand the absolute, well, I think I, I, think I have a pretty good feel for it, but I don't think yeah. a lot of distance coaches understand the absolute contribution of uh, elastic ability to uh, speed and, and maintaining speed. I mean, if with every step you're using less metabolic ability you're going to be able to maintain that speed longer. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's kind of simple. I mean, long distance coach, you need to learn from, I mean, sprint coach, uh, I mean, short distance, long mechanical. Distance, yeah. Long distance coach should have a sprint coach in his pocket. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, see. I mean, a good sprint coach, not just any sprint yeah. coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, I ran fast, so I know what I'm doing. 
or yeah. yeah, I coach this guy. But I mean, you have to watch somebody work and see how they work with people, and then then you're going to start to get an idea of why things work. If they particularly if they can explain why they're doing something, what does this do to the system? What does this do to this muscle? What does this do to this? Yeah. And 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 you, you've got to have that kind of conversation. With video, we might be able to have that conversation. Without it, we're not going to be yeah. able to have it. So, and I'm not yeah, yeah. set up right here yet to do it. I mean, I'm just home. Um, yeah. I'm trying to actually download all my videos and everything into my computer. It's happening yeah. as we speak. So uh, at some point, we might be able to do that. I see the sprint coach. Uh, they are using the technology, the, everything they got from science, but probably it's less for a uh, long distance coach. Uh, coach, I think for a lot of uh, even sprinter uh, and long distance coach uh, using too much health training. Uh, what, what do you? I don't know whether about... I don't know whether they're using too much or not. I can't tell you. So I, is it I, good or I not? See the loading. Yeah, I mean, I, I just can't tell you that whether they are. I, I, it'd be unfair for me to say they are or aren't. Uh, yeah. Hill training can be fantastic if you know why you're using hill training and if you know what it's going to do for the athlete. Um, you know, the farther along the spectrum of of uh, distance you go, with marathon being. The furthest you go, I'm not going to talk about mountain running or yeah. any of that because it's a different deal. But with the marathon, I mean, even the marathon, you can still get mechanically more efficient so that every step leads you to being able to sustain your velocity longer. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, so we talk, uh, let's talk about the strength training. Uh, how much as a sprint for improving speed? How much, uh, or we need to train strength training? Do you need? Is is not over, like over focus, just focusing too much. Some, I mean, strength and conditioning or sprint coach. I think sometimes they focus too much on strength. Is it really that much important? How how, how much they need to train? Well, certainly in the acceleration part, they need the first three steps to be, and they are affected greatly by the weight room, whether it's cleans or squats or jump squats or. Kaiser squats or the runner or whatever it may be, those first three to four steps are really important. We go out to seven steps. Yeah. Um, you know, you, 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 once your joints start moving fast, yeah. um, the weight room loses its, its effect. You're repositioning the legs then move up from it. it will it keep, you have to keep the ankle stiffness, but, but now the reposition is taking place at a higher level. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't take as much strength to do max velocity as it does to accelerate to max velocity. And even that, the acceleration part is a very limited amount of time uh, to achieve that. Because we all know some really strong sprinters who just can't run that fast because they're not coordinated. It took Sue almost three years to, to finally coordinate really well. Uh, so, uh, what, uh, what's your recipe for strength training? Uh, if you say not for sprinter, for uh, not sp uh, for like Does soccer it, player, it, for uh, not it, it, sprinter. Let's let's just say let's put it this way: if you're going to run, you're using yeah. the same muscles, whether you're yeah. sprinting, running distance, or whatever, whatever the sport may be. So, part of your training is always going to have to be um, at some level the same lifts that you use. Uh, in, in, in the 100 meters, for that matter, you don't. You, you're ambulating. You're, you're sprinting. You're running. It's the same muscles. So they have to be strong. Yeah. So your so. lifts have to be quite similar. Um, I don't talk about reps and sets all that much because yeah. it's pretty individualized, yeah. and it changes a lot with the with the coach because you know guy has a bad day with his wife or his girlfriend yeah. or his his sponsor or whatever he comes in he's not going to lift the same um yeah. you can have a plan out there and that plan gets negated pretty fast when you see the emotional status of the athlete or the physical status yeah, right. of the athlete so um yeah I, I'm, I'm probably a poor interview when it comes to telling people what to do because i don't do it yeah. i just don't do it you know, I, 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 I refuse to do it because I've spent enough time in this business to know that 
I mean, the X's and O's of strength and conditioning are pretty easy. I mean, you use one formula. You know, P equals F times V. F equals M times A. D equals V times T. I mean, come on. You know, it's not hard. There's three formulas. You, you yeah. set up your triangles and you're good. So, you know, if you're doing, if you're lifting and you're in any sport, power is still king. If your power is king, then you got to look at whether you're looking at the force or the velocity side. You know, what do you need that time of year? What are you trying to train? The force side or the velocity side? Keep your velocity higher. Get your force up. Get your force up with higher velocity. You improve your power. Is the position, is the position slow velocity power dependent or high velocity power dependent? Ask your questions. Get your answers. Apply them. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, interesting. Uh, these years, uh, I mean, like past, like probably special 10 years, there's a lot of you are uh, here in the functional trainer training, like a single leg exercise that are, oh, they're talking a lot. Oh, you are playing football or playing basketball. It's always one leg exercise one. It's not like two, it's like jumping double leg exercise or we, running. Do What's your thought about this? We do both. We, we do both in, within the week. We'll do a single leg, double leg. I mean, there's, there's lots of different ways to skin that cat. Do it with a machine, without a machine. You know, um, it, it, to negate double leg lifting completely, you know, I, I don't agree with Mike uh, on that. Um, I think it's still a very uh, gratuitous. Well, you, you get a lot out of doing double leg squats, for instance. Um, single leg cleans. We do most of those with sprinters from the floor, from the others from the box. There's a host of different things you do based upon that athlete's needs. What do they need? Yeah. You know, in a track and field, we're in an individual sport, not a team sport. So it, it makes it a little bit harder when you want to, tr you can transfer it over to the individuals within the team sport if you know what they need. But um, the fact is that I, I, I'm, I can't tell you what somebody needs unless I'm watching them, looking at them, and yeah. I have some metrics on them. And then I can tell you, okay, here's where you need to go. Maybe you need medical intervention. Maybe you need therapy. Yeah. Maybe you need surgery. Maybe you don't. Maybe you need to go home and rest. I don't know. I can tell you that there's basic lifts that everybody does. There's no magic to it at all. Yeah. You, you, you could just stop with the magic stuff. And this is the way you got to do it. That's just bullshit. Um, the body needs to move, and it needs to move fast and powerfully. It needs to let the velocity come from the force that you choose. So the velocity is dependent on the force. The force is not dependent on the velocity. Um, and, you know, you go from there. Yeah, interesting. So there is no uh, general recipe for all the athletes or the, the sports. I mean, like you say, individuality. And, 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 so everybody's different. The needs is different. They and never should there be. I mean, uh, can you write a workout for ten sprinters? Probably. You're still going to change that workout, um, but at different times of the year, that changes. You yeah. know that they need about two point five to three times their body weight for a for a squat. Yeah. Be in, and we know those numbers on sprinters. Um, not everybody's there. There's outliers. But for the most part, they're 2.5 or so to three times their body weight, very close to that. Now, someone like Sue can squat 185 kgs at 71 kilos. He's not at three. He's below that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you get to going. To, and, 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 and that part's done where we know we're working on the force part of the power equals force times velocity relationship. So later on, that comes off, and now you're working on the velocity side of that while maintaining the force. You just play with it, you know. It, it's so it's sometimes difficult to explain, and there's a lot of guys, you know, I guess, I, I'm not so sure if they coached anybody, but they certainly yeah. can talk a good game. Yeah. So, so how about the core training? I mean, this is all, there is a lot of attention also now in core training. What do these, not to do that. Just, are you 
agree with this? Are you doing the core do. training? With... We do. I think I've probably got about 100 videos on different core exercises. The body, because you still, you've got to look at strength training as coordination first, without a doubt. Yeah. And so anything you're doing in the weight room is to enhance the coordinative abilities of what you're doing out on the track as well. So, exactly. you know, we, I, um, when it comes to core, I'm trying to find better ways to coordinate the core firing. Uh, the core in our sprinters is very, very strong. Um, I've had the biomechanists from around the world comment about how they how they don't see the deviations in our sprinters that they see in others. Now our sprinters are relatively short, um, but they do have long torsos for the most part. Um, though whether that's good or bad is hard to say, but that's 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 part of it. And 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 you, as you well know, we do use a lot of metrics and a lot of technology. Yeah. Um, it's very basic. I don't do anything exceptionally hard because I'm dealing in a different language and yeah. I need to keep it as simple as I can and I've tried to um, and in many cases simple is better anyhow you know don't overcomplicate the, everything you're trying to do yeah that's interesting yeah because there's too much information about the core training and I, I and, but as a runner and sometimes even you are running it's like I was listening with one of the coaches they could say I mean the sprinting is the best uh, core exercise you do sprinting is a just a kind of uh, good uh, core exercise or you are doing deadlift or squat is all involving I mean any exercise anything even you walk in your breathing is uh, uh, you're involving the uh, core exercise everything, everything goes to the core I mean just it just it all does you know so there's, there's no, there's nothing that doesn't. I mean, as long as you have uh, opposing arm and leg moving in some fashion, you're, you're yeah. going to the core. So. Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of coach. They, uh, a lot of coach. They focus in uh, anterior muscles. You know, they don't work too much in posterior muscles. They, I don't know. They don't do any pull-ups and you know, rowing or I don't know deadlift. Do we need well, to do the same? Is this the well, ratio we live ratio? first for health and balance. As long as we don't unbalance something that shouldn't be changed. For instance, things like the high jump, javelin, stuff that where the imbalance is, is vital to being able to achieve the, uh, uh, the event. But, um, you know, I, I mean, we mix it up. As I said, we're, we do so many different core exercises, so many different exercises through the year. Um, maybe times, maybe we could be just more specific to certain exercises and get better at them. But uh, we, we, we do do that as well. But if we have some core exercises, we continue just trying to uh, achieve better uh, force and velocity uh, metrics in both of those. Yeah, so uh, are you a fan of the deadlift? Uh, I remember one of the... I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of the deadlift, but or only because of backs, but I am a fan of the hex bar deadlift, yes. Ah, so you just suggest that let's use the, the hex bar? Uh, I, I prefer hex bar deadlifts, yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, but yeah, because I, it, there, it, it keeps that center of mass t from getting too far out in front of their center of mass so yeah. it keeps that bar from getting too far out in front and then allows them to lift as best they can i mean a lot of times you just got guys the people with you know really weird lever systems so you've got to pick the tool first and so yeah. some people can't do some people can do really good um squats yeah. or really good deadlift and whether the person next to them can't do can't do a squat or a deadlift but if yeah. they move into a hex bar and a safety squad bar, they're yeah. fine. So yeah. you got to choose your tool. Don't just try to force everybody into the same tool. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's why having That's a nice. gym like, yeah. like you have at the NSTC with many different tools in it gives you the ability to change it, to change and adapt that athlete to the right tool. Don't try to get the athlete to adapt to the tool. 
you know, don't try to get a six foot five inch female volleyball player, you know, a one ninety four yeah. volleyball player to try to squat with a straight bar if they've got long femurs and, and, and short tibias or long femurs and long tibias for that matter. They just yeah. can't do it. So, so exactly. quit trying to do that drives me absolutely crazy to watch it in U.S. colleges and everywhere. Just change the dang. Don't tell me, oh, we can teach them to squat. No, don't teach them to squat. Teach them to squat with the right tool. You know, that, so don't try to force a straight bar on every yeah. human being that walks in your gym. Yeah, interesting. So, Coach, uh, let's, I mean, as you are a jumper uh, coach, I mean, very, I mean, one of the top in the world. And so we, as in, uh, so we talk about not, uh, again, not sprinter athlete. So we are doing like we are in stringent condition. We're doing too much jumping, hopping, and bonding to improve. I mean, as a plyometric training. Uh, so, the what? How how we improve our jump in our atlas? I mean, whatever we are with basketball uh, player. Definitely, with, I mean, the Chinese don't do enough. Chinese don't uh, specifically don't do enough weight training, heavy, and they do more jumping. Now oh. that was, works really well for a while, but then you've been working over here on the velocity side of the equation. Yeah. The force side doesn't help your power at all, so you're actually limited by the amount of power you can start to produce. Um, they all work. They all work. It's just yeah. how you put them together, and there isn't any special way. Yeah. Um, you know, we all try to do something slow, something medium, something fast. Yeah. And and you could be a try it or slow, medium, fast, medium. If you're doing quads, if you've got basically set up four exercises to work through. It, these are things that you have to play with, and you can't yeah. be afraid to just go ahead and use your brain and change things. That's what you yep. do. That's why you're a coach. That's why you're a professional. Be an artist. Ground, you know, ground yourself in the science and then become the artist that's the coach. Thank you. Yeah, that's, I think, very, it's, it's very important. I mean, it's just sometimes we, some, and some coach, they confuse about the, so when they do sprint, they do uh, power exercise, they do strings uh, training. Uh, so they don't know something like they do too much weight in exercise too heavy. Well, uh, look, if, if you're measuring and your results are going down, freaking change it. You know, don't, don't ask somebody else. Cause we're not looking at your athletes. We're not looking at your program instead, yeah. change it and figure out what is it that we need and why aren't we getting it? And if we aren't getting it because we're lifting too much speed or we're lifting too much strength or we're having too much volume, change it. It's not yeah. that hard. Yeah, it's change simple. It. Yeah, very simple. Yeah. Very Just simple. freaking go in and change it. Besides that, the human body adapts relatively quickly, you know, five to six, seven weeks. And you're going to have to change it then anyways because yeah. Yeah. once it adapts – all you're doing is just grinding it in and your coordination challenge is now lost. Now you won't be able to continue the coordination that you need uh, in the weight room and, 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 and integrate that. Because remember, the weight room's got to be yeah. integrated into the sport, the event, whatever yeah. you wish. So it's never, you're never practicing the sport in the weight room. Sport specific in the weight room is, to be quite on, uh, honest, is nonsense. Um, yeah. But you can do things that you can utilize to integrate the coordinative and, and to help coordinate the abilities outside the weight room. But it's not sports specific. You just can't be fast enough, you know? Yeah. Sports is just too fast. The weight room is just yeah. too slow. I think we, as a, like, when we see, I mean, um, most of the strengths and conditions in the world, we see, so we do too much weight, like sometimes like 40 minutes, one hour in some coach event, they go more than that. But we see, I mean, speed, uh, it's very important. But when we come to design a speed training, we say, okay, do like the five times uh, 20 meters or six times do this. Or so we put it, make it speed uh, very easy. Do you think this is like, like if you are athletes, uh, let them do right 10, 
10 times 20 meters, 10 times, I don't know, 10 meters just for one session. So like 10 times 10 meters for one session. Does it enough? I mean, we need to work the same uh, like time as strength training. Can't, can't tell you. Just can't tell you. I don't know what, how old the athlete is. I don't know what level the athlete is. I don't, I don't know anything about the athlete. I mean, I refuse to give you an answer to that because I don't know anything about who you're talking about. So you, 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 as long as we want to keep speaking in generalities, yeah. you're not going to get many answers from me because I don't speak in generalities. I, I have a difficult time with it. Um, you know, when we look at a 100-meter sprinter, we yeah. might do 12 acceleration opportunities yeah. in, in, in an event. Our weight training lasts two to two and a half hours. But – yeah. We're not lifting that whole time. We're taking yeah. four to six minutes rest, sometimes eight minutes rest between sets. Yeah. You know, the problem is everybody wants to hurry through this, and in the and 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 you know at the university level in the United States they have to because they're they're and 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 the pros, I mean they're yeah. they're limited. But in, in when you're looking at uh, the kind of setup that we've had in China and other places, you actually can lift properly and lifting yeah. properly. Your sport means taking a lot more rest in some cases than you normally would. Yeah, that's uh, our that's, yeah. our minimum regular normal weightlifting, not circuit training. Normal weightlifting is a minimum of four minutes rest. Minimum. Yeah, interesting. Per, so, per set. Yeah, so if you like, so if you talk about like a, a soccer a player, like a wings, you know, and they do have. They do have too much uh, sprinting. They need to go follow the ball or take the ball and follow. Uh, Don't, do you think? Can't, can't tell you, man. What you, what you need to know is how many meters do they run? Yeah. What velocity do they run those meters at? How many change of directions do they have in the game? Okay, what is their weakness in terms of when they get in and they, they got to bio? I mean, you've got to test. You've got to understand what's yeah. wrong. So you can't just use and say, oh, it's a wing. He needs this. No, that yeah. wing in that offense may not yeah. need that. Yeah. So so when you have the opportunity today to have the metrics to measure these things at high performance, the level that we're working at, you do it. Yeah. And you find out, you know, is it do, do they make 1200 change of directions? You know, so if they make 1200, what velocity are those 1200 at? Are they at 4 meters per second or are they at 8.5 meters per second or are they occasionally at 9 meters per second? You know, it, it, and, and this helps guide you with what you need to do in the weight room because if that's what they're doing and they're, if they're doing a lot of low velocity change of directions, eh, who cares? But if they in t indeed are doing a lot of high velocity change of directions, now you've got a different problem. And again, your first reason for lifting is to reduce the potential for injury. So you do that first and, and then performance is second to that. And coordination is involved in all of them throughout. So, um, yeah, you, who are they? I mean, you can have a, a, a winger who's a short little guy or yeah. a guy who's 6'3". Those are two different athletes exactly. playing the same position. What, what What's the difference there? Leg length changing. I mean, you know, what can this guy do that this guy can't? What do they need to do better? And that's your relationship with the coach. Coach, what do I need to do to help him? And the coach, a lot of times the coaches go, I don't know. You know and then you're in trouble because a coach should know what that athlete is, is, uh, needs. And, and in many cases, in professional sport, they just get a different guy. You know, he doesn't fit the system. He's not. Instead of improving him and trying to make him better in, within the system. I love it. It's just you uh, you pay too much to the details because I, uh, I've seen a lot of coaches, they have the same approach. They say, okay, we want a strength, so strength is the same. Whatever is a sprinter, is a basketball player, tennis player. You know I mean, you want to improve the speed, strength, power. I mean, all is the same. So it's, I mean, the same things. I mean, so they use the same approach for different athletes for different sports always i mean they they, they they use the same recipe and when i love it when i hear and, it, it's just that in a lot of cases they do and that's because they only have time to do basic strength and, and and you know granted that's all they have time for 
and you've got to give them credit for doing the best they can with the time allotted. And, and, I, and that frustrates them. We work, when you work at high performance sport, you have the time and you take the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, football players are notoriously lazy. Uh, they're getting much better because the longer you can stay on the pitch, the more money you can make. Exactly. You know, you stay in that pitch for <laughs> 10 years, you're making a lot of money. And yeah. the guys know that. And so now that's now their health is becoming more and more important to them. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah this, this, I see these previous years. I mean, the uh, medical team, uh, physio trap, uh, they are helping a lot with the sports and giving us a lot of guidance, uh, how to prevent injury, how to reduce injury. And I think they're helping uh, our industry a lot. Uh, but one curious I have also, I mean, I mean, uh, are you as a uh, spring coach, athletic coach, I mean, do you have information about everything? Uh, if I mean, in your team, do you have a, a strength and conditioning coach in your team when you're training? Not normally. I mean, I've had few people ha help me out. Uh, Joseph Coyne and uh, and Rolf Ullman and Kevin was there. You know Kevin. Um, but for the most part, I, I write the workouts. It was good to have Rolf and, and Joseph because I could bounce ideas, which is nice. And we could look at some um, uh, more individualized uh, training that, that we could we could incorporate more because there was then a coach who could take them while I had these guys over here. Um, and then and then Doc or Wongo J also served in the strength and conditioning role for me. But for the most part, that's um, I take care of the majority of that. Um, and nobody's ever really written workouts. Yeah. I would give Joseph the lifts I wanted done and then yeah. have him um, – coordinate how those lists were going to be incorporated in the week because now he understood yeah. what I was doing every day and he got pretty good at it after a while it took him a while it's not easy to do uh, Kevin never really got it um, he just didn't have enough experience Rolf yeah. is a track coach so he gets it it was easy for him um, and you know uh, to Joseph's credit he did he, he, he did a, a, a pretty good job uh, figuring out how to add things in take things away um, do more core, do some other therapy stuff. I mean, he's he's that kind of guy. So it was it's good to have um, someone of, of of his intelligence level and capabilities uh, there to work with. But otherwise, uh, no, I haven't had a strength coach. I've had some young guys yeah. who I have to teach, but they're just basically setting the gym up, you know, and getting it ready for when the guys come in. Give some advice for young coaches. I mean, it's a in a coaching area or in the business area as a business how they develop I mean their financial well the first advice I give is don't do what I do what I did um, don't sacrifice a good portion of your life uh, for others determine how much sacrifice you want to give and have in your life um, make that a priority you know your, your your own health your own family your own happiness make that a priority uh, you, you know until you're 30 approximately find mentors find people to hang out with go hang out there's there's some pretty good guys out there and and they'll they'll let you just sit and watch and and and, uh, and uh, participate and you know I mean just learn uh, find jobs that challenge you start with younger people because it's harder it's harder in a different way, um, you know. Undoing is is a lot harder than doing. So the undo part takes a lot more proficiency than the doing part initially. So, you know, I would suggest that everybody starts in middle school. Go to a middle school, become a track coach, do something that makes you have to think about how to teach these people coordination. Because what you're going to have to do with the older adult, the older athlete later on, is undo their coordination, coordinative abilities, bring them back, and then take them back out again. That is one 18 months, two years, sometimes a three-year process where they're finally getting it. 
Thank you, Coach. Thank read. you, Coach. Obviously, read as much as you can. You can see my library behind me. That's only a third of my library there. Not even a third of it. I've got about 10, 12, 14 bookcases full of books here, most of them regarding sport, psychology, physiology, therapy. Yeah, get yourself as well-rounded as you can in all the different elements that are involved in what we would call an IST, an integrated support team, or a PET, a performance enhancement team. But the integrated support team, you want to have some concept of what each member of that IST is going to have to do, and so that you, you're going to have a modicum of knowledge within each area so that you know whether somebody's good or not. That's important. Thank you very much, Gus. Uh, that was all I had. Uh, uh, thanks. I appreciate for your time. Uh, and do you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know that people want answers, and they get frustrated because I won't give it to them. See, we are, yeah, coming from an education background, my yeah. job is to teach you to think. It's not to feed you. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. It's to give you the ingredients and say, bake the damn cake, you know, uh, instead of baking the cake for you and going, okay, here's how you, you know, you did it. But, you know, when you look at different sports and different things, there's, you're always going to have the opportunity to evaluate and do a needs analysis do a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Use a business model to start to understand your athletes' needs. Understand what the best in the world look like, what the best football players, volleyball players, basketball players in those positions, that those heights, um, you know, what, what, what do they look like? It, it's, just, it's just a matter of doing your homework and doing a little research, and then you're going to have a better idea how to help that the young athlete standing in front of you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I think the coach, as well, like you said, this is, I mean, you get the, you give a lot of uh, the guidelines, approach, what they want to be, what they want to look. It's, the thing is not simple, uh, and then the, they need to, like, study, get more information, like, as a, from the books, from the mentor, from training young yeah. athletes. And the thing is not easy, like you say, okay, give you answer and tomorrow you go to the track or to the court and use it. And this is, I think this is the honest uh, uh, answer because some coaches, they think it's easy. They, I mean, they listen to a podcast or just they read a book and then tomorrow they be a, a great coaches. Uh, up yeah, I, 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 I take this profession very seriously. And so when somebody asks me, certain questions i may sound testy but what i'm really sound saying is go figure it out because i'm going to push point you in the right direction i'm exactly. not going to do it for you you're going to exactly. have to go do that on your own because as you do it on your own you're going to learn more you're going to it's going to become yours you're going to own it you know it's it's yours and i i i want people to own it analyze synthesize the knowledge to create your own working training philosophy. Yeah, that's very, I think, important. So this, they understand the thing, what they are doing, not just this copy-paste, they just do it. Others doing, they do the same uh, things. Uh, thank you, Coach. That was all the okay. question, all the things. Uh, appreciate your time, I mean, in this uh, uh, evening, and uh, especially now after, I mean, this many years, and you want to take a rest, and you give me this opportunity. I appreciate a lot. Thanks for your time. Okay, I okay. <laughs> Couldn't hear much of that, but you're welcome. And uh, you know, we can we can do it again sometimes with sometime with videos and things, so you can get a okay. sense of of what I'm talking about. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Take care. Take Thanks care. now. Thank you.